I know, I know. I said I was done with Booker's. I did say, though, if I did hear good things about a batch, I would try it. So here it is. Booker's Tag Along Batch. Will I regret this one? What's up, folks? I am Jason C. from The Mash and Drum, and today we have the second release from the popular Booker's Bourbon lineup from Jim Beam, the Tag Along Batch, or release 2021-02. You guys may know that Booker's was the first barrel-proof bourbon I ever tried that started me off on my interest in bourbon and whiskey overall, so it always has had, you know, kind of this special place in my, uh, you know, in my whiskey soul. But recent price increases on Booker's with four batches a year at about 100 bucks, hoping that one of those releases is a hitter was becoming a lot to ask. So I'm gonna pour this and let it open up a bit while you guys take a closer look at the tag along batch here on the Mash and Drum. Booker's Bourbon is one of the small batch bourbons produced by Jim Beam and the barrel proof stand out among the brands in the Jim Beam small batch bourbon collection along with Knob Creek and Basil Hayden. If you remember, Baker's Bourbon used to be in that mix before it was rebranded and bottled as a single barrel bourbon. Booker's Bourbon is usually aged between six and seven years old and is hand selected for multiple barrels in the center cut part of the warehouse where Booker No said that the temperature and humidity are the most favorable for fine bourbons. Booker Noe originally bottled his straight from the barrel bourbon as gifts to close friends and family and launched his selections as a brand available to the general public with a very small release back in 1988. This followed the release of Blanton's in 1984, which was a single barrel product. Now the reason why I bring up Blanton's is because Booker Noe wasn't too keen on the single barrel releases because of flavor inconsistency. So he instituted the small batch process for his Booker's where he thought he can get more of a consistent flavor profile with each release. So the newest Booker's bourbon called Tagalong Batch takes its name from the way the brand's founder and former master distiller Booker No learned to make whiskey by tagging along with his grandfather, Jim Beam, and observing production. Now Booker's son, seventh generation master distiller Fred No, selected the batch, which was aged for six years and five months and bottled at 127.9 proof with an MSRP of about $90. So each release has a little bit of a story card that's uh, written by Fred No, telling the story about you know why that name came to be. Uh, so the passage about the tradition of tagging along is actually a huge part of bourbon history. So I'm gonna read that short passage to you and then we'll dive in. Uh, the tradition of tagging along has continued generation to generation. I learned much of what I know about whiskey by following in dad's footsteps, digesting all the information I could while working side by side at the distillery. It's also a tradition I continued with my son, Freddie, and one I hope he'll share with his children in the future. So on the back of the card, it actually tells you which barrels from what production date were part of making this blend, gives you the percentage breakdown as well. So it's always a cool little, you know, little note to, to read and see how many, but sometimes that list is short and sometimes the list is pretty long. So let's dive into this one and see if it's as good as I heard it was. Here we go. Oh, I'm liking the nose on that bookers. So generally with bookers, you get this most of the time, not all the time. Normally I get this really, you know, shelled peanut, peanut, uh, you know, toasted peanut shell type aspect to it. A lot of people love that when it comes to bookers. It's like the, the one note that they continually go back for, which is why they keep buying them. The special bookers that I like, I think you just have like an extra level of sweetness. And this one does, this has a ton of brown sugar. Really, really nice. Ton of brown sugar and cinnamon. It's very desserty on the nose. You could feel that proof a little bit. I mean, the nuttiness is there, but it's just not all peanut shell. You get a little bit of, um, you know, some of those other aspects in there too. All that brown sugar sweetness. Man, good amount of oak presence here too. I'm actually picking up a little bit of chocolate. Dare I say like a little coffee note? Like a little bit of a coffee? 
Maybe that's because I just had coffee this morning. Maybe I got coffee on the brain. <laughs> well, maybe not coffee, but I'm definitely getting a little bit of a, like a chocolate covered peanut, I think, like a goober. Man, I used to love goobers at the movie theater. All right, let's give it a go, guys. So far, great nose. Here we go. That's good. That's probably better than the last few batches of bookers that I've had. Um, this one does have a little bit of that extra layer of sweetness to it. I mean, that brown sugar note is just, it's a brown sugar bomb. There's a lot of it going on. A ton of vanilla, obviously. You know, that rich caramel, rich vanilla, brown sugar. It's something that's really kind of the, uh, the one of the stamps of a good Booker's batch. Usually it's also that rich, like dry peanut shell that a lot of people like, but uh, you know, if I'm gonna spend the money on a Booker's, I like it to be a little bit extra flavorful than just taste like peanut shell. Let's go for another sip. A mm, little bit of smoke in there, get some of the barrel char. Yeah, I'm actually picking up a little bit of that chocolate on the palate too. Just like a little bit, but enough to keep it interesting. The brown sugar, the vanilla, the sweetness, it's got the proof to it. I'm digging this batch. This is, um, now is it, is it, well, we'll get into what I think it's worth, but let's, uh, let's go for another sip here. All right, so front of the palate, you get all the sweet and you get all the spice. The brown sugar, the spice, just takes over the front of that palate. As it works its way back, here comes that little bit of a peanut shell. You get all the cinnamon, you get some, more of that, that spice kick. Again, a little hint of chocolate comes in, just a ton of brown sugar, you know, the vanillas, the caramels. And then, you know, like all bookers, you get a nice long Kentucky hug here, a nice little long finish. It lingers, it's spicy, a little bit of that oak char. All right, one more sip, then I'm gonna compare it to probably the last favorite batch I had, which is the uh, Booker's Country Ham, which is the measuring stick for all future bookers from, from there on out, so here we go. That's nice. That is just a good, sweet, smoky, little bit of chocolate, a lot of brown sugar. It's a, it's a very well-balanced Booker's. It doesn't go too sweet, and it doesn't go too far of the peanut shell note that, like I know a lot of guys, like you said, I know a lot of people love that dry peanut, some of that real like roasted peanut characterizing in some of the Booker's. But if I'm gonna spend the money, I want more than that. I want a little bit extra sweetness. So let's compare it to Country Ham. All right guys, so here's Country Ham. Country Ham came out in 2019. It was the third release in 2019. This one was six years, four months, and two days. So actually a little bit younger uh, than the Tag Along batch. And this one comes in 124.7 proof, uh, which is a tad bit lower than the 127.9 proof that we see in the Tag Along. So let's compare. Yeah, see, Country Ham just has like, so like I said, generally Booker's is around six to seven years old. So six years, five months for, for this Booker's, for the Tag Along batch. Six years, four months and two days for the Country Ham. But the thing about Country Ham is it comes off older. Like you get like almost like a 10 year type of bourbon profile, especially on the nose. Just dark and rich and super sweet. The Booker's tag along batch on the nose, while it's sweet, there's some youth to it. You could tell it, you know, it hasn't been in a barrel way too long. All right, let's try the country ham. Man, country ham is just so damn good. It's that level of sweetness and that this is one of the, the nice Booker's that has a really deep, rich cherry blackberry note to it to go along with that sweetness. There's just something about that country ham. So, the good thing about tag along batch though, is it gives you the sweetness. It just doesn't have that really nice fruit kick that the uh, country ham had. Yeah, so tag along batch, I think goes more down the line of chocolate, maybe a little bit like peanut butter, a lot of brown sugar, hardcore vanillas, a little smoke. If you had the country ham and love that one, country ham is just a little bit elevated in sweetness and just has this extra layer of, of, uh, of fruit Yeah, just ridiculous vanilla, cherry, almost like a caramel apple note going on in there. I don't think it's as good as uh, Country Ham, but let's go to the final breakdown. All right, guys, so for final breakdown, we'll start with price. $90 MSRP, at least where I live here in Ohio. Secondary market value. You don't really see these on the secondary too much. You see the old ones, 
uh, you know, the, the old hard to find, really big batches like Center Cut or uh, what's the other, Sip A While. And then you'll see, you know, the special releases, 25th anniversary, 30th anniversary. Don't really generally see the new ones. So when it comes to availability, availability here are pretty good. It's Jim Beam, they do have great distribution. They show up, you know, at least where I live here, you know, though, though, that four times a year, but they do sell out fast, at least in my area. Uh, if you like bookers, definitely take a look. This one has already released, so it might be around your area or it might be coming sooner than later. All right, so for value, bookers has definitely gone down in value since the price has gone up. I thought, you know, as it, you know, uh, when it used to be about, you know, 65, 70 bucks, I thought it was a little bit of a better deal. Even for a six to seven year old bourbon, you know, barrel proof, uncut, unfiltered from a great distillery, I felt like you were still getting, you know, a good, you know, bang for your buck then. At 90 to $100 now, I think the value has gone down a bit. So I would say it's a, probably more of a low value. When it comes to the most I'd pay, I would probably stay with the $90 or if you could actually, some states I know get a little bit cheaper than the 90 still. So if you could still get it for 90, then I wouldn't go higher than that. If you get it cheaper, then that's a way better price, but I wouldn't pay any higher than 90 for this. All right, so is this a recommend? Uh, for this one, I would say yes, I'm, I'm digging this batch. Um, would I buy another bottle of this? No, I, I think one is fine. Uh, the thing with this one is, is that if you like that really deep, like peanut shell, you know, harsh, like dry peanut profile on a Booker's, you might want to skip this one. This one has more of a sweetness factor to it, which I think elevates it a little bit. Is it still worth 90 bucks to me? No, I'd still rather buy an Elijah Craig Barrel Proof or even a Rare Breed uh, for an uncut, you know, unfiltered type of bourbon experience. Uh, but if you are a Booker's fan, I think this is probably one of the better batches that I've had in the, you know, the last, you know, three or four releases. This one tends to have a little bit of the extra, you know, bump and sweetness. It's got a little bit uh, more of that, a little bit of a chocolate kick to it. I think I got a little bit of that coffee bean in it. I think it's a little bit more interesting than some of the past batches I've had, at least recently. Uh, it's still not as good as Country Ham, but if you're in the market for a, a good Booker's with a little bit elevated sweetness, I think you'll like this one. All right, guys, well, we went back to Booker's today. Hope you enjoyed the review. If you did, hit the subscribe button below. Please hit the like button. If you haven't yet, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter. Let me know if you've had this one, what you think of it. And as I always say, it's not about the whiskey. It's the people you share it with. So cheers, and I'll see you next time on The Master and Drum. Take care, everybody.